information out today about the terrorists behind the deadly shooting at the Pensacola Naval Air Station last year. Is this just an odd occurrence, an outlier, or is it a sign of something bigger that we ought to worry about? I thought we'd talk about that with our friend Cully Stimson, who's a senior legal fellow for Heritage and the manager of the National Security Law Program. Cully, good to have you back. Always great to be with you, Lars. So we see this report, and I was pretty excited about it. Uh, CBS News uh, came up with the original story that the FBI and Justice Department have found evidence linking al-Qaeda to the deadly shooting last December at the Pensacola Naval Air Station. Uh, The FBI says a Saudi trainee at the base opened fire, killed three members of the military, and wounded eight others. Mohammed Saeed al-Sharani. Uh, killed by responding police, is now said to have been in contact with al-Qaeda. And as I've read into more of the details that have come out since the original report, it suggests that he's been associated with or affiliated with uh, al-Qaeda for a a period of time, hasn't he? Since at least 2015 from public reports, and obviously he must have been inspired by them before that, and from other published reports, uh, it looks like... uh, ACAP, Al-Qaeda from the Arabian Peninsula, helped him be placed in the Saudi Royal Air Force. And then, of course, we know that he earned a spot at the prestigious Naval Air Station in Pensacola for flight training with uh, about a dozen or a couple dozen uh, Saudi students, which is a typical number for foreign students at that air base. And so he carried out his jihad um, at the behest of ACAP. But... How is it that the Saudis let him get in? Uh, Did somebody turn a blind eye to something? And does this suggest that both the Saudis and the United States ought to be screening uh, these these candidates a lot harder? Well, yes and yes. Uh, We don't know how he slipped through the cracks in Saudi Arabia, at least not from published reports. And we don't know how, uh, from published reports, he slipped past um, the Pentagon's vetting uh, for students who uh, were supposed to be no security risk uh, to attend uh, training in at Pensacola. So I think there's a lot more to become. But to your setup question, um, this is a long this is yet another example of a long line of uh, operatives who have figured out what the what the uh, slips are and the crack, the cracks in the system and figured out Uh, how to exploit and carry out their jihad. There must be, no doubt, dozens, if not more, of others who didn't slip through the cracks, who we stopped along the way, and we just haven't heard about it. Well, and and I'm glad for that, if we manage to block some of them. But does it also suggest how many more are out there in sleeper cell position right now? Uh, Should we assume there are none of them? Or have we heard about any developments where, you know, after this guy popped up, and, and killed people, that, that the U.S. government took a hard look at the rest of the students and said, okay, we're going we're gonna to go back and re-vet these people and maybe boot some of them out. I know they booted some in initially out of that same group, but who knows if those are more bad guys or, or just innocent bystanders you know, who were legitimate students. Well, Secretary Esper uh, took a hard line and an appropriate line, in my opinion, by booting all of them. Uh, from Saudi Arabia for now until the vetting system is uh, better. Uh, But isn't it ironic, Lars, that here we are at a time when the Senate uh, is looking to replace, looking to place further restrictions uh, on the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which is the very same provision uh, that we use on a daily basis to target non-Americans, non-U.S. persons reasonably believed to be overseas, and, and lawfully collect data on them, and yet they're trying to put more handcuffs on that very important tool, uh, which no doubt was used in this investigation. So it just makes no sense. No, it, 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 it makes no sense at all because, look, I understand the legitimate concern that you want, uh, don't want, say, an honorable general to find, fall, uh, find himself falling afoul of, of this kind of nonsense where it's used as a political tool within our own country. But it does make right. sense to watch for, for, for na- threats to national security. And, and uh, I mean, are the Democrats fighting for the bad guys or what? Well, unfortunately, some good Republicans uh, are proposing amendments uh, to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which really makes no sense. I mean, there's a huge disconnect between the flaws and deficiencies, which are real, 
that the DOJ IG, uh, Michael Horowitz, laid out in the four uh, Carter Page uh, uh, FISA warrants, which were numerous and should never have been issued in the first place. And, and, and then the, the amendments that the Senate is passed, trying to pass uh, to so-called fix this, which it won't fix it at all. It'll just recreate the wall that existed between the FBI and the intelligence surveillance uh, apparatus before 9-11. It's, it makes no sense. And politics, you put your finger on it, Lars, politics is the only reason uh, why they're doing that. Well, in fact, what Cully's referring to, in case, I mean, I, I have to always think, Cully, that I'm a bit older, and you are too, than, than a lot of people listening to the show. But there was a time where Americans said, are you kidding me? We've got silos of information. So one government agency knows there are pilots trying to learn how to fly flat and level, but not take off and land. Seems like a, a real, you know, a real uh, situation that you should look at. And then <laughs> other agencies... Right. And, and they're not allowed to put the information together because the information is in silos. So we, we, I know there was a lot of noise about getting rid of those silos and allowing cross-communication where it made sense. In fact, I've even wondered lately, Cully, how many of the intelligence agencies were aware that something weird was going on in China in November and December? And I've asked people, well, d- you know, if somebody over at CIA says, hey, they got some kind of weird disease going th- thing going on in China, is there any sort of back channel where somebody at CIA or, or any of the other 17 intelligence agencies, whatever it is, could pick up the phone and call CDC and say, guys, we, we're seeing some weird stuff going on in China. You might want to get a heads up on that. Uh, and yet, I, as far as I can tell, I've never heard any published reports that talk about the intelligence agencies, which I assume have some, you know, eyeballs or human intelligence or something on the ground in China, of them, you know, calling up an, an, a, a, more, a more civilian agency like CDC and saying, there's something going on and this goes into your lane. And all the, all the, I mean, imagine what an early heads up might have done for this country if they'd got it, no matter where it came from. Right, or the rest of Europe and the rest of the world. Um, right. One would hope that if we did have that intelligence or it was developed through the Five Eyes or other credible intelligence services, that we would have been spread, spread around. But my old boss, Don Rumsfeld, used to say Washington's the only town where sound <laughs> travels faster than light. So <laughs> if it was out there, it probably would already be out there in the news. Um, but, of course, this, this Pensacola shooter, back to the original topic, Lars, does reignite this debate uh, between the government, the, namely the Justice Department and Apple, and whether Apple is going to create a so-called backdoor uh, in the platform of the iPhone to allow intelligence services or law enforcement here uh, a way to get into the phone. And, and you know darn well that this guy, who's luckily dead, uh, learned from the San Bernardino shooting because he, apparently from published reports, took his handgun during the firefight with law enforcement and shot his phone in a boneheaded way of thinking that would destroy what was on his phone when, of course, it was already in the cloud. Uh, So he clearly has picked up on this, and others who he's associated with uh, have as well. Well, and Cully, that's that's one I've gotten into arguments with my listeners about because they've said, no, you can't, government can't have a back door. And I said, hold on. They say because it'll violate my rights. And I say, hold on, the Constitution presumes that there will be cases where a judge will say to the police or to whatever agency, here's a warrant. Yes, you can go through that locked door and look at Lars Larson's stuff, but there has to be probable cause to believe there was a crime. On well, San Bernardino, they go to the judge and the judge says, yeah, open it up. And Apple says, no, we've made a lock so good that it can't be unlocked. Should an American company, a private company, you know, imagine if, if that were true in physical cases. So I lock my front door with the lock that nobody can unlock except me, and then I'm dead. And the government gets a warrant and says, go look in Lars Larson's house for evidence of this crime that we know happened because there were dead bodies on the streets of San Bernardino at that point. And the company that made the lock tells the government, we are not going to let you get in that door. Cully, it's always a pleasure. That's Cully Stimson. 